بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Just when we thought that the days of pan- pandemic will soon be over or maybe we need in the end we've had the devastating news that another we- another wave seems to be kicking in and now we're preparing to face it and this has caused quite a bit of alarm This has caused quite a bit of fear. This has caused quite a lot of concern, worry. And that is not out of place. That worry is legitimate. That concern is valid. It was difficult enough <clears throat> during the previous lockdown. And if there is going to be another lockdown, it is going to, it is going to make life very difficult. Just as we are, just, just this, this sense of isolation, this sense of, of, of being, being in a lockdown, being isolated, being uh, disconnected, forced to disconnect ourselves from our, uh, our, our, envir- our, our immediate colleagues, our friends, our family, just, that, just as that has caused a concern and fear, it reminds us of something that should cause more worry and more concern. And that worry and concern should trigger a response. And that worry and concern is about qabr and about, about grave. Allah Ta'ala clearly states in the Qur'an Kareem, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Everyone is to experience death. The death will knock at, the, at, at every single door. And everyone will be taken away, me including me and you. It does not mean, because if I say that it can happen during this pandemic, then that may frighten people. That might be viewed as a negative comment. That might be viewed as scaremongering. That may be viewed as something unhealthy. However, it is a possibility. And... R- This worry and this fear, if it causes any, any negativity, then you should read حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ You should read وَأُفَوِّضُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ I surrender myself to the will of Allah. Surely Allah is very compassionate to, his, to, to the servants, to His creation. You should say, I place my trust in Allah. And Allah is the best one to be trusted. So have learned to have tawakkul and trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. If He chooses to take us away, then we will be going to the best of all those that exist. The creator of the heavens and the earth. The one whose name we recite before anything and everything that we do. And we say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, In the name of Allah, the most compassionate and the most kind. So we will be going to Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Have that trust. Have build that faith. Let this, let, 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 let this reminder and let this awareness not scare you. And let this not force you into despair and depression. But turn it into a positive energy. Let it remind you that you will be held to account for whatever you are doing or not doing. You will be held to everything that you do. It'll be paid back to you. And if you do, if, as, as, we, as we said last week as well, يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسِمْ يَوْمَ تَجِدُ يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسِمْ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ Whatever you're doing today is being recorded and it'll be presented back to you. وَكُلَّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كِتَابًا يَلْقَاهُ مَنْ شُورًا with your own conduct and it's being preserved and recorded, this will be given back to you. You'll find it open in front of you and you'd, you'd be able to read it. So let this, this understanding that you are not in control of your life encourage you, motivate you, inspire you to take responsibility for whatever you are doing. And let it, let it then give you the energy that is needed to fix yourself and let, let this 
push you and let this this kind of the, 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 this realization this understanding let it build you to be a better person to be a better human being remember when the soul is taken away you will be taken to your grave and that is the place where you'll be isolated where you'll have no access to anything in this dunya in this period of pandemic if if, if may allah forbid if, if things get worse then you will be you will be alone you will not be able to meet your friends you will not be able to meet your neighbors you will not be able to go and meet and enjoy a day out with your with your colleagues you will not be able to do all that you will be denied of all those joys of life however you will still have access to your wealth you will still have access to your savings you will still be able to speak to them and you will still be able to there they will be to 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 fall back onto your friends they'll be able to give you some motivation some help some 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 verbal assurance but once in your qabr once in your grave there you will be all by yourself there'll be nobody around you you'll be alone by yourself your wealth will not be with you your savings will have no value for you on that day your friends will not be able to reach out to you in fact they won't the most of them will not even remember you they'll try to forget you even those who loved you they'll try to forget you because your memory will hurt them so their way of dealing with that hurt and pain would be by trying to forget you they will talk to a counselor and the counselor will help them forget you they'll speak to their to <clears throat> they'll go and open up books and find books and find solutions online how to get over this loss and they will be suggested that do things that where where that, that they enjoy most so they'll try gradually make an active effort to forget you and not remember you your wife your siblings your parents your children they will get advice and they'll seek counsel how to forget you and then you will be left to pick up the pieces you will be able you will be left alone to face the consequences of all that you did and in your qabr you will be alone all by yourself in that pitch darkness there won't even be enough space for you to to toss and turn and then there'll be you have no idea what awaits you there the words cannot describe the language does not have those expressions and and it and in, in vocabulary such words that can truly explain that 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 state that the person and the individual will be in rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned that i've been i was shown the state and the, the scene of qabr and i've not seen i've never seen anything more scarier than that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was shown jahannam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah azza wa jalla showed him because he was a messenger of allah through him allah communicated spoke to mankind he conveyed the messages of allah to people he came as a warner then he came to he came to 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 give as to give a wake up call so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was shown what awaited mankind in the hereafter he had seen jahannam he had seen the scarier sights of of hell and he was also shown he was shown the day of judgment and he was also shown the day that the moment in qabr and in the grave and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i've never seen anything more scarier than 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 the scene in the qabr and there in the qabr the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said wara ibn uh, many many narrations that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he explained what happens in the qabr in the qabr the person is then allah is, while he's there when one hadith it is said that the qabr squeezes individuals whether believers or non believers pious or or sinful everybody gets a squeeze for a believer for a righteous and for a pious person this squeeze is just just like a mother mother when she presses her child against against herself of full of compassion and 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 joy and satisfaction so the, the squeezing of a believer is just like that it does not cause any trouble to him but squeezing of squeezing of a disbeliever squeezing of an enemy of allah squeezing of a sinful person that is terrible the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in one hadith the ribs from one side get into the other side and he demonstrated that by 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 criss crossing his fingers of one hand to, to in, into the other and that is the start of the punishment and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said 
In the Qabr, Allah Azza wa sends two malaika, two angels. They come and even their appearance is the scariest. They come and for the, from the believer, they are pushed away by his armor. Allah Azza wa keeps them away. So a righteous person doesn't even get to see them. Because their appearance is something that made you forget everything, uh, makes people, would make individuals forget everything. Now this, these two angels, in the scariest appearance, they appear and they asked, firstly, Marrabbuk, who is your Lord? And they asked, what was your religion? And they asked, what about this person that was sent amongst you from Allah Azza wa Jal, by the Almighty Allah? What do you know about him? What do you say about him? A believer would say, my Lord is Allah. He would say, my religion is Islam. He would say, the man that you're talking about, I could never forget through him throughout my life. In every salah I read, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. My salah wouldn't be complete without his mention. My adhan would not be complete without his mention. Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Uh, my kalima was not complete without his mention. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashadu anna Muhammad an abduhu wa rasooluh. How can I forget him? He was a messenger of Allah that Allah sent amongst us. He was the Rasul, Allah's Rasul and he was my guide. And <clears throat> the Malaika, when, this, when, 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 when he would finish saying this, a heavenly call will be made that this person has been truthful. He's been honest. What he has said is indeed true. He did, he did say what, he's, what, 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 he, what, what he had practiced. So for him, lay put an underlay from Jannah and for him <clears throat> open uh, open a scene for to, towards Jannah that he could sit there and enjoy and get that comfort in his Qabr and for a non-Muslim for, for someone who disobeyed Allah's commands who walked away from Allah Azza wa Jal, who never considered submission to Allah never declared his he never he was never a Muslim the he would have no, no way nothing to, to nothing to say who was, who, man rabbuk, who's your Lord? He never, he never admitted in this dunya that Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He'd say, I have no clue. What was your religion? It's the religion I never took seriously. I have no clue. Ha ha, la adri, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. And then, then it'd be said about, what about this man that was sent amongst you? No idea. What are you, what are you saying? Which man, which man are you talking about? Ha ha, la adri would be his response. And then a heavenly call will be made that this has this has been a liar and today he says he, he never he never made, he never paid attention to to the reminders so now place for him place for him prepare for him an underlay from jahannam and open access to him from for, for jahannam where he could see the, the scariest sign and the adab and the punishment that awaits him in the hereafter so this is the opening the start of the new phase of life in this dunya when you came there were so many people celebrating they were so, the, the cars were being sent one to the other and, and, and a happy new baby and, and blessed new baby and congratulations and Mubaraks were being exchanged. And now you are, that, that, that was your second phase of existence. The third phase of existence all entirely depends on your conduct in this worldly life. My dear friends, many of you would be alone now. Many of you will be at home sitting, maybe having little idea of what to do. What I'd say to you, my, 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 my humble advice, as Rasulullah sallallahu would say, prepare to meet your Lord. Remember you are a servant of Allah. Your choices are limited. You can't do whatever you like. And so, so prepare for meeting your Lord. Fulfill your duty to, towards your creator in your body, in your wealth, in your time, in everything that you have. Turn to Allah Azza wa Jal through dhikr, through tilawat, through ibadat, through charity, <clears throat> fulfilling the rights of Allah, fulfilling the rights of other people. And, and, and you can only do that by making your iman strong. And your iman will become stronger, as I said, by frequent recitation of Quran al by keeping in mind the true nature of life. May Allah Azza wa grant us the understanding and may He give us tawfiq to remember. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.